Coming up on Rugged Expeditions, we're heading to Kodiak Island, home to bad weather, huge brown bear, great fishing. Hey, the teeth on that one. And the best Sitka blacktail hunting there is. It's also my old stomping grounds where I learned how to hunt. And we're going back to see if the hunting is just as good as it used to be. The town of Kodiak mainly exists today to support commercial fishing. The weather in Kodiak changes by the hour. It's unpredictable. Just because it's sunny now doesn't mean it's going to be nice later on in the day. There's an old saying in Kodiak that if you don't like the weather, just give it a second, it's going to change. But sometimes it changes for the worse and creates a tough work environment and to hunt in. Coming back to Kodiak is like going home for me. I spent a lot of time living and working there in the 80s and the 90s. Sitka blacktail deer was actually my first big game animal. I was lucky enough to hunt them all season for many years, so I was able to hone my hunting skills in a rough, dangerous land, hunting solo most of the time. What's unique about hunting the Sitka blacktail is you're not sitting in a blind, you're not sitting in a tree stand. You're out there doing the spot and stock technique. And on Kodiak Island, the terrain can be just as difficult as the deer. Sitka black-tailed deer are mainly found on the coastal islands of British Columbia and Alaska, with some pockets found on the mainland. A short-legged, stocky deer, they're a subspecies cousin of the Columbia blacktail, which live in coastal Washington, Oregon, and Northern California. These blacktail deer do not get the majestic horns of mule deer or Columbia blacktail. They carry a stunted rack, and most mature deer carry three points to a side, plus small eye guards. If you can find a buck with an extra fork in its horns, making him a 10 point, you've hit the jackpot. The weather had gone to hell, but the pilot said we might be able to still make okay. it to Old Harbor before it got really nasty. While it still looked like marginal flying conditions to me, at some point, you got to trust the pilot. Once we got airborne, I started to question the pilot's decision. Sometimes when things are out of your control, all you can do is laugh. I don't think landing in one piece has ever felt so good. Jeff Peterson owns a hunting transport service and take you out and drop you off unguided to hunt on Kodiak and the surrounding islands. He also takes folks out year round for some of the best fishing in Alaska. The trick with getting up into these high places where these deer are hanging out is to find a gap in this alder brush that kind of surrounds the shoreline everywhere you go. Here we there's some bigger trees that we can weasel through here. It's not as, as thick as it was down below, but man, it's tough hauling it back through this stuff. But once we get up high, it'll open up and we'll have some grasslands up there to walk in and be able to see more. It's a good system for this hunting here in Kodiak where you get a transporter to bring you out here, drop you off for the day. He's not a guide, he just is able to bring you out, 
take you to different areas every day, drop you off, come back and get you at the end of the day, or if you want to spend a couple nights out here, you can as well. It's really awesome to get to come out here and hunt, just doing it the good old fashioned way, hiking around, glass and deer. And it's kind of a mix between a sheep hunt and a deer hunt. These Kodiak deer at this time of year, lots of times they'll be up high, like those ones we saw this morning. And so you got to get up there where they are, but later in the year when the snow and the bad weather comes, it'll push them down closer to the coast. Also later in the year, they tend to drop their horns by uh, just after Thanksgiving, first week of December, right in that bracket. So if you're here for horns and not just meat, you got to get in here September, October, November. What a great place to hunt. Where can you look at that? Unbelievable. After scanning the Kodiak Island for any sign of mature Sitka blacktail, the first day of the hunt has come to a close. Now, Jay Allen Smith must make the long trek back to his rendezvous point for pickup. This is a self-guided hunt, with transportation being the only available help. When the Russians discovered Alaska, they made their first settlement at Old Harbor. The discovery of Alaska came in 1741, when a Russian expedition led by Vitus Bering eyed the Alaskan mainland. Kodiak Islanders enjoyed a few years of peace before more explorers came to the region and exposed them to foreign diseases. Grigory Shalikov recognized the rich resources the area had, including the abundance of sea otters, which was extremely lucrative during the Russian fur trade. In spite of efforts by the natives to repel him, Shalikov was determined to stay. The lasting legacy of the Russian era is the Russian Orthodox religion, which still stands to this day. What a gorgeous morning to wake up to. We've got very few clouds out today. The wind is laid down. This should be one of those days you dream of in Alaska. Let's see what we can see. open ground and there's clumps of this alder brush where these deer lay up and then they'll come out here and if we can get one at a good distance that we get to see them, then we'll be able to try and sneak in. This is good terrain where there's enough changes in elevation and brush lines and that that we should be able to get a decent shot at something if we can see a big one. This is nice country. You've got elevation with the faces exposed to our direction. But yeah, you've still got enough clumps of brush that gives you a chance to do the sneaky sneak if you see them. I'm gonna take my pack off so I can get in there quietly. I'm not sure about him. He's nice, he looks old, he's got belated tops. All I could see was from the brush, but now I can see his head just above this little ridge right here. We'll get a closer look and take a peek at him. I'm trying to, I'd like to get a dandy. I think this is a three by three with brow tines. And that's okay, that's normal for here. But let's go see. When we finally spotted a buck, all we could see was his head and his horns sticking up above the grass. I couldn't see him with my binos. And I know I should know better than I forgot my spot. Which when that happens, 
you only have one choice, and that's to try and sneak up and get in closer, where you get a good look at his horns before you get crack at it. He's just not, not quite there. His fronts are okay, but, and he's got really cool bladed backs, but he's just not that long. And, his front points aren't that big. He's an old deer, he's a nice deer. Look at him walking right towards us. <laughs> it's not your turn, buddy. 35 yards. You ever notice that when you don't have a bow, that's when they come this close? On the way back from hunting one day, Jeff said the tide was just right and the waves had laid down a little, so how about a little fishing? We had Jeff's father-in-law, Carl, with us and a fellow hunter, Larry Switzer, so they decided to join us and get in on a little fishing action as well. I'm feeling lucky today. I mean, we got three great rod setups. We got a calm patch of water here, which is the main thing we need today because it's been howling and blowing and raining. We had a little break in the weather. Center rod, center rod. Grab it Hello. and work it out on a release, Al. Give it a good tug. There you go. Keep it tight. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woo! Link card. Link card. Look at the teeth on that one. That's what I'm talking about. That's what you came for, right there. Holy Get crap. Down, at least. <laughs> what do you think? What a fish. <laughs> there we go. Oh, yeah. Carl wants it. Wow, On the grill. Nice pot. That's a peacock. That's unusual. Good one. Hey, Kodiak combo. Oh. Got him. This wind has laid down a bit today, so we're gonna head out of the harbor here and get dropped off on one of these islands that's right out here. Unless we can get in on the mainland, but even though it's a bit windy, it's a lot better than it's been. After a storm, you'll lots of time to get these deer back out into the open areas, so we're hoping that they're all back out feeding and doing what deer like to do. The idea with today is getting out here while we got a break in this wind and get up on this ridge. We're going to head down along this beach, cut back around so we should be able to see up into these bowls and get up on this ridge line here and see a bigger area. It should be good.
needed to get closer though. But there was very little cover and the buck would for sure see me from his vantage point if I wasn't cautious. spot where I can get a good rest. You can see here why I swear by having a bipod on my right this time. I got him at just under 400. He was still a long way off, but I had no choice. If I tried to get any closer, I was going to spook him. That hit him good where he goes down the hill. I know I hit him. <laughs> He fell over. I think what's so great about this and what makes me so happy about it is a lot of places where you go hunting, you've got to have a guide, and, and that's all fine, but you know, it's really about getting out by yourself, and hiking and picking the trails and making those decisions, and it's so special to be able to be out here and be able to do this, just you know, me and the animals. And, what it's all about. This is real hunting here. <laughs> wow. The Sitka black-tailed deer, it's really something to see the mass that they've gotten this year. We've had a couple mild winters here in Kodiak, and they've really put on a lot of this palmation in their horns, and the heaviness is much better than normal, especially for a deer this age. This is a prime deer, uh, standard horn formation, the size is very normal. The one thing that you don't see though on these Sitka blacktails a lot is this extra point on the top, giving them a little bit of a four by four look. But this size frame is what you would shoot any day of the week up here. You're gonna get some bigger bucks than this, but this is your classic Sitka blacktail look that they get where they've got this three by three frame and then they've got these extra points at the top like this so a buck that you'd shoot any day of the week in Kodiak. Really nice. What a trophy and what a dinner. Well now the fun part. This is some of the nicest meat that you'll ever eat, the black-tailed deer. They don't do a lot of running. Their only predator out here is the brown bear, and there's nothing they like better than a fresh deer kill. There's some folks that say that these brown bear have become attuned to the fact that when they hear a shot go off, they think of it as being the dinner bell, that they come to the shot rather than run away from it. The bears are protected other than limited hunting licenses which are issued each year. So a lot of these bears have never seen humans before and certainly never been shot at. So, you know, we're gonna try and get this animal, get it skinned out, get it the meat hauled out in one load so we can get it down to the beach before we attract any unwanted visitors. <laughs> Kodiak is just as I remembered it. Wild and woolly, dominated by the sea, lots of game and unpredictable weather. It's here where I started and it's the type of place that stays with you forever. <laughs>